Okay, so we're going to quickly go through how an organism may be identified uh, in a routine diagnostic laboratory. Uh, you can see in front of us here we have a uh, specimen um, information form. We've got a patient here, the imaginary patient called Harold Smith. Uh, it's got all his details on here. It says in the clinical summary uh, he's got a thigh wound after a bike accident. Um, pus is now present. He's been to the GPs before. Um, three weeks ago and there's been no improvement and he's had ciprofloxacin uh, from the GP. Uh, the GP has now sent this uh, form off with a wound swab, so he's swabbed the, uh, the pus filled wound and he's requested culture and sensitivities on it. So I, uh, culture means you want to grow the offending organism, the offending pathogen. Sensitivities means you would like to see which antibiotics are effective against this organism. Okay, so the swab lands in the uh, diagnostic laboratory. A biomedical scientist processes that sample. Now, don't worry too much about the details here, um, but what a, what a biomedical scientist would do is to inoculate, to spread this swab onto a selection of agar plates, and it's on agar plates that we can grow microorganisms. Um, there are various different types of agar that can be used. Um, we've got fresh blood agar here, we've got cled agar, We've got something called ST agar. We've got something called fastidious anaerobe agar. Um, don't worry too much about the details of those because you'll learn more about those uh, in second year. But essentially, they will, these different agars will allow you to grow different organisms. Some of them are selective agars, so they only grow certain organisms. Uh, in brackets here, we have the, um, the atmosphere in which the agar plates are incubated. So some are incubated in a carbon dioxide atmosphere. Some are in oxygen, so uh, normal air, and some are anaerobic, so in the absence of air. Um, MTZ is a metronidazole disc, so this is an antibiotic that you would place onto the agar in a little disc, and you would be able to see whether that antibiotic was effective or not. If that antibiotic is effective, then you may have an anaerobic bacterium present, because metronidazole is generally only active against anaerobic organisms. So the biomedical scientist has inoculated those plates and incubated them overnight. Um, the anaerobic agar plate would get an extra day in the incubator because anaerobes grow a little bit more slowly. Uh, we've gone, we've talked about doubling times for anaerobes being a lot less than for facultative anaerobes and, and obligate aerobes. Um, the biomedical scientist then gets the plates out of the incubator and looks at them uh, and he or she sees colony forming units growing on an agar plate, decides um, he or she wants to do a gram stain and sees these nice clusters of gram positive cocci. Um, cocci, they're cocci because they are round, okay, gram positive because obviously they are purple. If you look um, in a couple of slides time, actually this slide here, um, this is a generalized scheme for identifying organisms. So uh, we can see that we've done a gram stain here and we've got gram positive cocci. The next test we may consider doing is a catalase test. Okay, if we scroll back to the previous slide, uh, we have a catalase test here. And what a catalase test does is we take um, a, a dilute suspension of um, hydrogen peroxide and we place a drop on the slide and we emulsify our, our test organism into uh, that hydrogen peroxide. So we take some of the colony forming units and we emulsify them into uh, the actual drop of hydrogen peroxide and we can see here that we have bubbles present. Um, if there are bubbles of gas being produced after the organism goes into the hydrogen peroxide, then this organ the organism is classed as catalase positive. On the right here, we have a negative control. Um, catalase positive organisms uh, possess uh, the ability to break down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, and it's gas bubbles of oxygen that you can see being released. So we have a uh, we have a catalase positive organism. So if we scroll back to our scheme of identification, we can see that we're likely to have um, a Staphylococcus species here. Now this particular chart will not identify down to the um, species level. 
it's only got a genus level identification. So we may choose to do another test. Now, um, often we will do something called a coagulase test. Um, this is a commercial version of that called the, uh, the Staphyrex test. Um, and this tests for a couple of things. It tests for um, protein A, which is a protein that Staph aureus uh, produces. And it also tests for something called clumping factor, which allows Staph aureus to coagulate plasma. Um, and we can see in this particular test here, um, the test strain has been emulsified into a drop of the of the uh, the test reagent. And you can see that it's essentially gone all clumpy uh, and grainy. And this is a positive test. It means that the clumping factor and the and the um, protein A um, are both present in that particular organism compared to the negative control which is on this side. So we have a positive Staphyrex test. So this means that we more than likely have a Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, the biomedical scientist decides that they want um, a, a better identification um, just to be sure. So in that case we may go on to do something called an API test. Now in the API test um, we have a series of little cupules. These are little plastic uh, cups that are present in a strip. Okay, and then we have a series of biochemical tests. Now we can't see them very well from the photo, um, but there's an uh, identical replica sheet here um, which is present, um, which you're provided with when uh, you obtain the test. Um, now in each one of these cupules um, we have um, Freeze dried reagents, okay, or dried reagents. Okay, they may be sugars, so we've got glucose, for example, fructose, uh, lactose, mannose, etc. There's an array of, of biochemical tests here. We put a suspension of our organism into um, each of the cupules and then we incubate them. Um, some of the strips require incubation overnight, some of them are just for four hours. Um, when we take them out of the incubator, Initially, they're well. Initially, when before we've inoculated them, they are completely colourless. After the organism has gone into them and uh, we've incubated them, then they change colour depending on the, uh, how reactive the organism is with that particular test. Um, so we can see here that the result sheet divides the tests into three. Okay. So we have to consider the results as batches of three. So we take the first three tests. Now you can see here I've labelled this diagram as a red result is negative and a yellow result is positive. So if I put the results up here, we can see that we've got a red one. So we put a negative in the first result. The second test is positive, which is yellow. And the third test is positive. So we then add up the corresponding score for that group of three. So we've got a positive, so we've got four plus a positive two. And if, it, if it's a negative result, we don't add that number on. So four plus two gives us a score of six. We then take the next three tests. And again, we've got three yellow ones here. So we've got um, four plus two plus one gives us a score of seven, etc. And we go down the strip and um, score all of the groups of three um, and we, we produce a numerical barcode uh, at the bottom. Now in years gone by we uh, we would have had a book to look at in order to, to decipher this particular barcode um, but now in the age of uh, computers we have a database which we can go to and uh, we can insert this uh, the, the positive and the negative scores and we can get a uh, an, an identification for the organism and see how good that identification is. Now the last test here is not on the API strip this is a lysostaphin um, resistance test and that's been done in the laboratory and that um, that scored as a negative. So you can see we, we have our barcode here. Now if we take if we go out of PowerPoint and we go into um, the website, so it's called it's the API website, API Analytical Profile Index um, is the diagnostic test. We have we have to select the correct API. We know roughly what our organism is. So if we select the API staff, this is the one we want. So we go in here 
and we put in the test results. Now, if I've copied these down correctly, we should get a good identification. So plus, plus, then we've got plus, 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 then we've got plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus. Oh, I missed out a minus. Um, plus, 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 that should be a minus. Then we've got minus, plus, plus. Then we've got plus, minus, minus, minus. Then we've got plus, minus, plus, and then we've got plus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus. So our barcode is 6736153. And we click on confirm to say that's our identification. And API then interpret this for us. And we can see that we've got a good identification. It's identified the organism as Staphylococcus aureus um, with a percentage identification, a percentage certainty of 97.8%. So that's a good, very good identification. The next organism that it thinks it could be is only 1% certainty, and that's a Staphylococcus simulans. So we have a good test here, and we'd be happy to, to report that test um, as an accurate identification. There's one test here that it thinks uh, that 1% of strains would give a different result for. However, we're, we're happy with that particular test. So that's a brief um, description of how we may go on to identify uh, a microorganism in the laboratory.